this is part five now I did pre-record it um, but I got cut out for some reason so I'm gonna kind of go over these problems um, for me a second time but for you this is going to be the first time so number 21 says to graph the quadratic function and they give the function to me here and they say give the vertex the axes the domain and the range and then determine the largest intervals over which it's increasing and then the largest open intervals over which the function is decreasing so the first thing um, I need to do in order to graph it is to figure out what the vertex is. So I did um, h equals negative b over 2a. So the b is a negative 6, the a is a positive 1, which gave me 6 over 2, and that ended up with 3. And in order for me to get the y coordinate, I had to plug 3 into the function, and so I got the y value of 5. So that made me go to 3 and 5. Then I knew that a was a positive 1 because there's a hidden 1 right there. So that means it is going to open upward, which meant it was going to go in this uh, manner. So in order for me to figure out the y-intercept, that was when I plugged in 0 for all the x's and I figured out that the y-intercept was 14. So using the sym symmetry of a parabola, since I went uh, left 3 and up to 14, I went to the right 3 and then up 14, okay, so that I could get the symmetrical uh, placement there. Now the axes is always going to be x equals whatever this x coordinate is, so in my case x equals 3. The domain is negative infinity because this goes to the left forever, to positive infinity since this goes to the right forever. The range though is from bottom to top. So the lowest it goes is a y value of 5, and the highest is positive infinity. Now when you're doing range, you do need to use the brackets if there is a point there at the low spot, and there is. For E, we're doing the intervals for which it's increasing. So here it's decreasing, and then it increases. So it increases over here, which is x value of 3, all the way to the right, which is infinity. And because it's open intervals, it has to have parentheses. Now for decreasing, that would be this side. So how far left does it go? To negative infinity, and then it stops here, and that x value is three. Okay, now again, um, I knew that there wouldn't be any x-intercepts because um, the vertex was here and it was opening upward. So since the vertex was here and it was opening upward, that meant it was gonna go this way, so I wouldn't have any x-intercepts. Um, but if you are going to have intercepts, let's pretend that that was a negative, and then it would be going downward. In order for me to find those x-intercepts, I would have to set the quadratic equal to zero and solve it. But notice when I did it for the problem, I ended up with a negative inside the square root, and that's imaginary, which meant there were no x-intercepts. And I determined that using um, the fact that the vertex is here and it's opening up, but you could also show it algebraically by trying to find them and then realizing that they're imaginary. Okay, number 22 says if an object is projected upward from ground level with an initial velocity of 160 feet per second, then its height in feet after t seconds is given by this function there. Find the number of seconds it will take to reach its maximum height. What is the maximum height? So maximum immediate me immediately means vertex. But I need to know who's x and who's y, who's h and who's k, right? So the variable on here is t, so that's like the x, and then this guy on the left-hand side is always like the y, okay? So I need to find the x value, the seconds first, because the first question says find how many seconds, so that's the time. So I did the negative b over 2a, um, b in this case is 160, and a in this case is negative. So I computed that out and I got 5, so it would be 5 seconds. Now the next question is saying what is the maximum height? Remember this is the height, so I actually have to calculate the y value. So I plugged in 5 for the t and I computed that it was 400. So what is the maximum height? 400 feet. For number 23, it says the total amount spent by some number of people on clothing and footwear in the years 20 to 29, 2000 to 2009 can be modeled by this quadratic equation where x equals zero represents January 1st, 2000 and one represents January 1st, 2001 and so on. And f of x is in billions of dollars. 
So according to the model, in what year during this period was the amount spent on clothing and footwear a maximum? Again, maximum means vertex. So looking at this, X is the years and F of X, which is the Y value, is the billions of dollars right there. So if I want to know the year, I have to figure out the X value of that vertex. So I did the negative B over 2A. Negative of 71.98 over 2 times negative 4.271. And I got this value, but if you round it to the nearest tenth, like it tells me here, round all intermediate values to the nearest tenth, that is 8.4. So when I go to find the Y value, the F of X, I need to plug in 8.4. So essentially, what I did was plug in 8.4 into the function and then I found um, that the y value was 399 and it was 399.4 to something or another um, but it said round to the nearest round the amount spent to the nearest whole number so the 4 wasn't going to affect the 9 so it stayed 399 now Number 24 says Bob owns a watch repair shop. He has found that the cost of operating his shop is given by C of X equals this, where C is the cost and X is the number of watches repaired. How many watches must he repair to have the lowest cost? So lowest is another way of saying minimum. And we know that minimum means the vertex, okay? So, but which value are they asking me for? The X or the, or the Y, right? So it says how many watches, and watches was actually the X value. So all I needed to do was the negative B over 2A, and I had the number of watches. So negative B is a negative 246, A is a positive 3, so we get this, and then it ends up being 41 watches. Now 25 and 26 have to do with in behavior. So if you make your table, this should help in determining the in behavior. So a positive coefficient and X to the odd, in behavior, <coughs> excuse me, a negative coefficient but an odd exponent would have this in behavior, a positive coefficient and an even exponent would have this in behavior, and a negative coefficient with an even exponent would have this in behavior. Put that information on your note sheet. And then to determine which one of those four cases you have, you want to identify the term with the highest exponent. So this was the term with the highest exponent. It had a negative coefficient with an odd exponent, so it fit this description, which is why we chose that as the end behavior. Here, the term with the highest exponent was this guy. Coefficient is negative, but the exponent is even. So it's actually this case, and so we chose the end behavior that was going downward on both ends. Now, for number 27, it is multiple choice, um, and so depending on what the directions are on the test, you may have to explain why you picked what you pick, or you may not have to explain. It just depends on the problem on the test. Um, I always like to explain, so you see my work there. Um, but if I set x squared equal to zero, I get that x equals zero. So that's one of my x-intercepts. Then x minus three equal to zero gives me the x-intercept of three. And then x plus 3 equal to 0 gives me the x-intercept of negative 3. Now, this exponent of 2 means it's going to bounce at 0. This exponent of 1 means it's going to cross at 3. And this exponent of 2 means it's going to bounce at negative 3. So, I also need to know the end behavior before I start deciding how it's going to look. So, I notice that I have exponent of 2 times an exponent of 1 times an exponent of 2. Well, when you have of terms with exponents multiplied you add so I end up with an x to the fifth and notice that the coefficient in front is a positive one so it's a positive x to the fifth which is a positive x to the odd exponent which has this in behavior so the first thing I drew was the intercepts and then I drew the in behavior this side going down this side going up and you can usually outrule a couple of them just based on that but I noticed that these two had that behavior. They were going down on the left and up on the right. So these two are still in the running. I don't know what D looks like, but that's okay. We're going to keep going here. Now, at negative 3, I'm supposed to bounce. So I can't go through it. I had to bounce over. The next x-intercept is 0. And so in order for me to get there, I'm going to have to turn upward at some point. 
But at zero, I'm also bouncing, which means I can't go up. I have to go back down. And then in order for me to cross through, or in order for me to get to three, I'm going to have to turn back up at some point. And then this one I actually do go through, which coincides with the in behavior over there. Now, I didn't know how far, like if I needed to go this way or just a little bit. Same thing here. I didn't know if I needed to go that way or just a little bit. Um, but normally the graphs will tell you what it's going to look like. So looking at between these two, mine are both going downward. So it's definitely not this one because the humps are at the top of the x-axis where my humps need to be below the x-axis. So most likely it's going to be B just based on the behavior. It bounces, bounces, and then crosses, right? So let's try another one of those and we'll starting this one from scratch because I didn't get to this one I was pre-recording earlier. Um, so here if I set that one equal to zero, I get X equals one. So that means I would have an intercept at one. And here if I set X plus two equal to zero, I get X equals to negative two. So then I've got another X intercept there. Now I do have a power of three times the power of one, which means I ultimately end up with the power four. There is a positive one coefficient. So that is a positive X to the even, which means the in behavior should be going up on both sides. So I should be going this way and this way. So immediately, it's not gonna be any of these choices. It's probably D, but since I can't see it, I'm gonna go ahead and sketch it over here. Now, remember, when you have three, that means this one's gonna wiggle through there. So it does go through, but it does a little wiggle when it does it. And then over here, it's actually gonna cross. So I am gonna go downward. Now I don't know where the y-intercept is, so let me plug in zero. Zero minus three cubed, zero plus two. I get negative one cubed times two, which is negative one times two, which is negative two. So the y-intercept is actually gonna be here. So I am gonna be up here. I'm gonna cross right through. I'm gonna to come to this y-intercept, and then I'm gonna go this way. Now, at the one, it's wiggling. So if it's going upward like this, like a like a, a bowl, then and it's supposed to wiggle. Then over here, it's gonna go downward like a hill, like if it were doing this, right? Um, and then just kind of connect the two pieces together. So it is doing like a little weird wiggle right here at this exponent, at this uh, x value. And so I would pick the graph that's, that has that kind of behavior. Most likely it's D, but I can't see D. So I'm just gonna leave you with that graph, okay? In the test, you would select the one that's doing the wiggling in the correct spot and crossing through the correct spot. Now here's another one. Um, we should have time to do it. We've got about two minutes to go for this one. Um, but this one is not factored, so we do have to factor it. And I do notice that I have an x in common. So when I factor out that x, I actually get this expression. And then if I try to factor that, let me see. I would have negative 450, so 1 times 450, 2 times, who knows what, 225, 3 times 150, four times, nope, five is gonna be 90, six, no, oh yeah, six does work, 75, um, seven, no, eight, no, nine would be 50, but I'm not getting close to, the bigger number would have to be negative, and then in order for it to multiply to give me a negative, these numbers would have to be positive. But I'm not gonna get 15 just yet, so I have to keep going. 10 and 45, that's still too big. Um, let's see, 12. Nope. Um, 13 is probably not gonna work. Nope, 450 divided by 14. Nope, 450 divided by 15. That one does work. Ah, and that one will give us a negative 15. So this guy's gonna get split. It's gonna be x squared min or plus 15x minus 30x. And those together make the negative 15x. And then chop it in half, 
these guys have an x in common, these guys have a negative, and a 30 in common. So that will become positive x and positive 15. And then they have the x plus 15 in common, and so we have the x minus 30 left. So here we go, we found the factored version, okay? So if I set this one equal to zero, I get um, x equal to zero. If I set that one equal to zero, I'm gonna get negative 15. If I set this one equal to zero, I'm going to get positive 30. And those are my x-intercepts. Now I did have a positive x cubed in my leading term, which means the end behavior is gonna look like this. So this one's gonna go downward, this one's gonna go upward. And all the exponents here are one. So I'm gonna be crossing through this one, crossing through this one, and crossing through that, through that one. Now I don't know how high or low my little peaks have to go, but I'm pretty sure with just this information alone, you should be able to pick the graph. So notice this one not, does not have the right end behavior. I don't know what D looks like, but let's see. Um, negative 15, I don't have an x-intercept over there, so it's not going to be that one. Here I do have one, and then here I have one at 30. So it's most likely this one. And so it's crossing, and then crossing, and then crossing through there. So it's going to be C. Okay. And I think we're going to stop there for this video because I just went over 15 minutes. So hopefully the next video is the last part.